Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Curtis and this is the Kurt Locker. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how I take my coated barbell from this to this. So basically what happened is between moving from Texas all the way to Ohio, we had a long period of time where I didn't necessarily have a dedicated garage gym space. My father-in-law was nice enough to let me use his pole barn, but of course storing the barbells in a pole barn came with certain climate control issues. I am grateful for that opportunity, but basically what occurred over that period of time is it developed kind of this uh, oxidation on the outside of the clear zinc coating that came with my transformer bar. If you follow me on Instagram the other day, I did post a story and I jumped on there real quick as I just for some reason was like, you know what, I've had enough. I want to go clean up this barbell. And I posted about what I was using to clean up this side of the bar. And what I wanted to do was take you guys real quick on what I do to make this look like this again. Just as a quick note, anytime that you use abrasives on a bar, you do run the risk of actually stripping the coating right off the bar. So please take this with a grain of salt. I am doing this on my bars. I also come out and I typically, in a garage gym setting, oil my bars one to two times a week. So if that's something that you wanna do, if you wanna to try to take it down, just keep in mind that any abrasive that you use, whether that's a steel brush, a hybrid brush, a brass brush, steel wool, sandpaper, whatever you might use, any sort of abrasive is going to run the risk of removing that coating and removing the coating that came with the bar to protect it from oxidation. Typically speaking, all that you need during your weekly bar maintenance is some three-in-one oil, a rag, and a nylon brush. They do have different versions of this. Uh, they have bigger versions, smaller versions, they've got wraparound versions, but just really any nylon brush will do. That is typically going to be your safest bet when just doing routine bar maintenance, just trying to keep ahead of oxidation. Every once in a while, things get a little bit out of hand, case in point, and you gotta do a little bit deeper surgery. And when that does happen, you might need a little bit more tools. Now, I like to use a brass brush. I used to use a steel brush, but I don't know why, but I think the brass is a little bit softer. For some reason, it makes me feel better. I also like to use this 3-in-1 Penetrant Oil. The main reason that I like to use it more than the normal 3-in-1 is because it has this uh, retractable like screw on, screw off tip, and I do like this bottle a little bit better. I've never seen the normal 3-in-1 oil in this bottle, but I will continue to keep my eyes out whenever I go to Lowe's or Home Depot. Additionally, you need a rag, and then the secret weapon, the, finding, the finishing touch, after you put, I'm sorry, before you put on your last coat of oil is going to be quad zero steel wool. And again, remember, this does run the risk of removing the coating on your bar. However, it will definitely help you clean it up. So I'm gonna do my best to work on this bar, giving you guys full visibility so that you can see. But what you'll wanna do is use some sort of rack system. So there is a product out there called the Barbell Butler. It is from one of the gentlemen on the Home Gym Discord who does 3D printing. It's a really cool tool. I unfortunately have given my first one, my first set of them away, and my second set of them hasn't come in yet. It will make life a lot easier, especially for traditional barbells. If you don't have a barbell butler, just throw it in the rack and you should be able to do almost the same thing. It just requires a little bit more effort. So what I like to start with, again, we're taking this thing from uh, a lot of knot. If you can, put a uh, rag underneath whatever bar that you're going to be doing. So if you're doing this on the floor, put it on the floor. If you don't have a transformer bar that conveniently holds its own drip rag, uh, you can put it on the ground, whatever. But basically this will be to catch whatever drippings might come off the bottom of the bar. After that, just take a thin coat and just kind of evenly apply a bead. And then what we're gonna do is, I'm skipping the nylon brush because we are obviously past the point of nylon brushing, and I'm just gonna move straight to the brass brush. And I'm gonna start with just kind of spreading this three-in-one oil out over this area. Now just as a quick note, it is important to understand that when you're using a brush, just going side to side like this does do some good, but realistically you want that brush to like fully be kind of like, think about like a little fingertips and they're engaging with the bar. 
So if you're just running side to side, that's well and good and all, but really you wanna get a lot of smaller motions. That way you get the biggest bang for your buck. And you don't need to press hard. In fact, you really shouldn't press hard because you do run into the risk of having, uh, like, again, you're just increasing the risk that you're gonna wear through the finish on the bar. So I'm just gonna finish kind of getting this first one here. Now we can see as we look at this that some of the, the schmutz, if we will, has already started to come off and you can actually wipe a lot of it off. Now some of that is from the brush, but realistically a lot of it is also from what was on this bar. This is gonna basically just cut off all the extra stuff that I don't wanna waste my time with the steel wool actually removing from the bar. After you have that first one and you let it sit on there for a couple minutes, go ahead and just take and wipe it off. And it's kind of important because really the next step that we're gonna to move towards here is we're going to move to the steel wool. So again, this knocked off kind of all the big stuff. It might be just kind of a waste of a step if I was planning on taking it to steel wool. But if it's you at home and you don't, you really want to just limit how much aggressive force you have to put into your finish, uh, it might be a really good step to start with three in one oil. Um, as we look at it here on the back side, there's still a little bit, on the front side, there's still a little bit, and you can actually feel kind of that oxidation, or at least I can feel this oxidation a little bit on the bar. And what it is, it's basically the difference between a nice smooth finish, like I have over here, and kind of a rough finish. So now that I have most of the oil removed and I've got kind of that first layer of grime removed from the bar, it's time for the secret weapon, which is quad zero steel wool. So again, <clears throat> any abrasive that you use is going to run the risk of removing the finish that comes on the bar. For me, I would rather have this thing looking uh, good then have this already oxidized clear zinc finish. So what I'm going to do is use the quad zero steel wool and basically take it down until it, you know, looks pretty again. So the easiest way is just again, not using too much force and insert dirty, dirty jokes here. Take it and uniformly spread it across your hand and you can either just grab and twist. Just think of all the the dirtiest things. Now this piece I've been using for a bit and what you'll want to occasionally do is kind of fluff up the steel wool. Otherwise you're not getting the most abrasiveness out of it. But as we can see without using too much force, because I'm really, I'm really not trying all that much, uh, but we're already getting through a lot of that grime that was on here. Some of the deeper stuff is taking a little bit extra effort to get through. But hey, we really care about shaft maintenance here. So let's make sure we take care of our shafts. Additionally, don't forget to flip your bar up and actually check out the bottom side often forgotten about and you'd be surprised how much you miss if you never actually flip the bar over. Obviously if you're using a barbell, you just roll it in the sleeve, uh, but this is, the transform bar is really nice. I'm sure that most SSBs uh, aren't this nice because you can turn the sleeves in. When you throw the bar up to clean it, it actually supports itself in the rack. Now what I'm doing here is I'm peeling back the pad and the intent with peeling back the pad is to kind of find the level of original shininess. That way you know uh, if you're done or not, like if you actually do have it back to what it was. So again, just peel that pad back a little bit. You could take it off if you wanted to, uh, but I'm lazy. I'm stuck. So now that we've moved uh, from the shaft, so this is actually, that's 
pretty dang good. And honestly, I obviously I can't tell if it damaged the coating at all. I don't know how to tell if it damaged the coating, but I can tell you that it looks significantly better and that it was only getting worse. So basically the longer that I allowed that grind to sit on this finished bar, the worse that it was getting. So I've had my assistant here working on the handle for a minute now. So I'm gonna take over on the handle part and I'm gonna show you guys basically cleaning up this handle. We're gonna wrap this video up. So again, just getting right in there. I did get a fresh piece of steel wool. That other one's pretty tore up. I'm gonna get the old piece of steel wool back when I go to do the actual knurling portion. Uh, but for now, I'm just gonna grab a new piece. See how this one's shiny and this one's not? It's making it shiny. Again, you don't need to really push it all that hard, or I'm sorry, you don't need to apply that much pressure, but using uniform pressure and just making little passes will do the best at just removing that basically outer coat of grime and oxidation and not actually bite into the zinc coating that's underneath. So if you do have a bar that you remember used to have really good knurling and then all of a sudden it's just absolute garbage, this could be a good solution for you. This knurling from Kabuki Strength is a very nice knurling. If you watch my original video, I did talk specifically about how the knurling on a handle like this isn't really that necessary to be nice, but it is really nice to have. And since it's been in the barn, it definitely had lost its grippiness. It's definitely back now. And everything is looking way better. That's it for the video. This is how I took my very oxidized transformer bar and made it look new to better than new. I'm really excited to see how well this new finish will last over the course of time in my garage gym. And of course, I'll keep you guys up to date on that. If you follow me on Instagram, if you follow the link down below, it'll take you right to it. That's been it for this video though. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that watch every week. And remember that when it comes to your garage gym and your bar maintenance, you should always keep it better, awesome, and of course, badass. I'll see you guys next time.